EFM. In uh, this is the Department of Family and Protective Services uh, versus Cassandra Dean. Uh, we are here today on a request for an order in aid and investigation. The department has filed its petition, and uh, we have set this for uh, this short hearing this morning. Um, appears to be present. We have Mr. Alvey for the department and uh, Mr. Valdez. I assume Mr. Alvey is your investigator and, and your witness today. Correct, John. All right, hang on. It looks like Ms. Dean disconnected. It looks to me like she's not having much luck getting connected. She didn't. She was on. She had her video on, but it didn't look like she's got audio done. So, okay, Miss Dean, I'll need you to unmute. Can you hear me? Don't spoke speaking. Uh, okay, now am I ready now? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Good. There you go. Okay, we've got your audio and got your video now. Okay. Okay. All I did, ma'am, was just call the case number. And I was just uh, saying who was present. So, Mr. Um, let me just back up for you. Mr. Alvey is present for the Department of Family and Protective Services. Mr. Valdez is uh, present as a representative uh, of the department. And uh, Ms. Dean is present, uh, who uh, uh, is the other party to this case and uh, has possession of the child. Um, so, Mr. Alvey. Um, this being the department's petition, I I will just say, I mean, of course, I've read the affidavit that was presented to me. Um, so I I have some questions, but is there any new developments since the affidavit was prepared and filed and presented to the court? I would uh, ask that you swear Mr. Valdez, Your Honor. I don't know if there are any, but it would be better to ask him under oath if it please the court. All right. Mr. Valdez, you are the uh, Department of Family Protective Service investigator who is seeking an order to aid. Yes, so, I am. And you filed with our petition an affidavit. Yes. That was filed on Friday of last week. Yes, sir. Is, are there any new developments between the time that you prepared and filed your affidavit in today? No, there's not. Okay. Then, Your Honor, I would ask the court to uh, rely upon the affidavit at this time unless you need additional testimony. I do have some questions that I'd like to ask Mr. Valdez, and then, of course, I'll give Ms. Dean the opportunity to do the same. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Valdez, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm aware and understand that this intake was a result of um, the fact that, that uh, Ms. Dean, who is the maternal grandmother to the child that we're here concerning today, but she has some other grandchildren that are in care of the department right now, and that she was undergoing um, a home study, uh, potentially to be placement for those other grandchildren. Is that correct? From my understanding, uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Do you know the, do you know how Far that home study, how far they'd gone on that home study? I mean, what, had somebody met with her? Had anybody been out to the home? Anything like as that? As far as anybody meeting with her, I don't know anything about that. Uh, my intake, I got my intake and it just um, stated uh, positive um, for cocaine on a hair strand. All right, so so you don't have any knowledge about how far along in the process that home study was? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay. Mr. Alvey, do you have any knowledge about that? I do not. Um, my, what, my in, what I believe I've been told is that once that drug screen came positive, that they stopped any further um, looks at the home. Um, but I'm not sure where they were at in that home study process prior to that drug screen being done. Okay. All right. So those questions may be better to ask Ms. Dean, which which we certainly can do. Um, 
Okay, I I did note that in the affidavit there was mentioned that that you had confirmed with uh, Paladur High School that the child is enrolled in school and essentially was attending, although there have been a few tardies and there have been a few absences. Yes, ma'am. Any unexcused absences? Um, I don't remember right off the bat. I know it wasn't very many absences, though. Yeah, except we're not very far into the school year either. Correct. So, you know, a few absences a month into the school year, if they were, particularly if they were unexcused, that, that is of concern. Mr. Valdez, when you were discussing this, the school attendance um, with the school personnel, were they concerned about the number of absences and number of tardies? Uh, no, they weren't. When they when I talked to them, they were not. Okay. All right. Okay, Mr. Alba, you have any more questions? For I do day? not. I do not. Yeah. Ms. Dean, if you would, please, ma'am, would you raise your right hand for me? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you will give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. And I'm going to give you an opportunity, Ms. Dean, to, to tell me kind of what you want to tell me. But um, I do have some specific questions for you. So how far along were you in this home study process? Um, I was all the way. I had uh, completed the home study. Um, I thought I was doing good. Um, Mrs. Um, I had went up the ladder with it because, you know, it was eight of my grandkids taken uh, from the homes of the mothers. And um, <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a, my, I have a, um, self-employed business called Hustlers. Um, I do a lot of things where I, I, I sell stripper clothes. I sell um, things on the street. I go on a corner. I might set up a, a booth or anything. To, um, and when they told me, I touch a lot of money. And, I, and me, myself, I put my money in my bra constantly. Like, you know, if I have money, that's where I'll keep my money. I mean, when she came back and said I had a positive, I did this voluntarily. It wasn't court order for me. Did It was something that I didn't feel like it was something wrong with me. I didn't, I, it, it just, it was a shock. Um, I take also, I have um prescription for Tylenol. I take Tylenol, I have, um, I have an anxiety problem. Sometimes, you know, we take, we, with 16 grandkids, you get anxiety. Um, none of those things was in the drug test um, and it was just cocaine. Um, and I was kind of um, concerned with the lady that, I felt like it was something more to it that y'all was kind of like, you know, it wasn't a true in, in, in fact that um, it, it should have been if you if I was dirty, I should have been dirty where the um, um, the Tylenol threes that's in my system. I take every day for pain for my back. Um, um, I have an anxiety. I take medicine for anxiety. None of those things were in my system, but. She kept drilling that I had a background pass with cocaine in my system. And I kept on uh, telling her, you know, um, that was uh, 2014. I went to prison before and I went for taxes. I didn't go for drugs, but she kept on um, pushing the cocaine name out there to me. And she came back. She came back with positive cocaine in my system. So that's what happened with the grandkids. I went all the way. I, I did everything. Um, I had, um, if first she did it, she said that, well, you might not do it because you have a background with drugs in your system. You might not get it. She waited. She did me a 30. I did this for 35 days. Um, everything they, I, they came in my home. They looked at my home and everything. And I really thought I was going to get the grandkids. And then she, she did it. She said, can you go take a test? I went right up there voluntarily and took a test. And then, um, I was heard that uh, Mario, one of the soup, uh, a caseworker, said that they lost my thing. They had to send it back off. They couldn't find it. And then when they did come back, um, I got positive for cocaine. So yeah. So that <clears throat> so that was really my question: was did the home study evaluators did they come to your home? Have they been in your home? Okay. And in the process of that, did any did anybody at any point in time say? okay, there are certain things in your home that we think might present a safety risk or that you need to fix or you need to do or anything like that? No, ma'am. All right. So who all is in the home? You, your mother, 
No. Um, and then and then the thing about it, I just don't feel like they did their homework. Um, I have a little with my mom and said, um, I think it's a homestead. I don't know where they got the address from. And for um, I think it's if it's the if it's the DP, I don't know who told them uh who called CPS on me, but whoever called CPS on me, if it was a worker or anybody, the supervisor, whoever called, I don't know who called. I just really can't understand who called them on me, but whoever called on me when they did a home study on me. I would feel like they would have known where my home was. My home is not 226 North Woodland. So, but my question is who lives there? Me. Okay. And the child? No, because I doesn't live with me. And that's another thing, because I doesn't stay with me. Because I, at the beginning of the um, summer when I was on my vacation, because I decided to move with her mom to stay with her mother. Um, and so she moved with her mother and I had spoken with, uh, I forgot what lady was and told her that because doesn't stay with me. She stays with her mother. Um, when I told her that, I think she, I was out of town and she, I told her when I get, get back, I'll try to find a lawyer or get whatever what I need to do to get this, uh, uh, situated, um, understood what's really going on because I don't have the child because I hasn't been in a home with me since school started because I used that register her for school. I didn't register her for school. I don't take her to her doctor appointments. All those things go through her parents. In this paper form that I got, it was so many things that wasn't true. Um, the dad knows where the mom stays. I'm like, okay, that was weird for him. I guess they got all their information from the dad because he has two or three pages saying that I don't have any dealings with them. I spoke with biological father, Jermaine Oliver. I explained to Jermaine I've read, it, I've read it. I've read it. Okay, yeah. So I'm just saying that I don't have the child. My mother don't have the child. Their mother have the uh, uh, has her. Um, okay. when they came to my mom's house, my mom is bipolar schizophrenic. She just had a real bad car accident. She's in a hospital. Seven wheels broke right now. Um, and swole up. This had happened last night, like 12 o'clock last night. I was at the hospital all night long, and if this has been a weekend kind of stressful because I had already previously told uh one of the people that was reaching out to me that Kazaya lives with her mother. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do today. Um, uh, I'm going to, uh, based on, based on the information that was presented to me and then also what I've learned today uh, and in light of particularly, you're telling me that the child is not living in the home anymore, but um, I'm going to authorize the department to uh, interview the child. And they can okay. do that at school um, or, or or wherever is, is deemed to be the most convenient place to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Because the home study assessors have been in the home, Mr. Alvey, I'm, I'm going to simply refer you to get their their report or their notes. You know, I don't see any reason to necessarily allow the department into the home at this time if the child is no longer living there. Um, so but I will permit the department to interview the child and just make sure that everything is okay and, and to talk with her and, and visit her. I'm also gonna specifically order, well, let me, Ms. Dean, do you know whether she is at school today? Um, okay, so then she's getting ready to change from Polidor to Tascosa from our understanding. Cause I, um, when this went on, when it kind of like- So uh, where is she, let me, the, the question is, where is she? Is she at school today or not? I, I don't know. I've been at the hospital. I just came home for this Zoom meeting. My mom was in ICU. I've been okay. at the hospital at 11 o'clock last night. I haven't spoke with anybody today. Um, I kind of like was kind of having a hard time with, you know, I'm not too uh, savvy with the thing. I, I haven't spoke with anyone today, but. Um, okay. Well, all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to order you not to make contact with the child. Mm -hmm. uh, until the department has had an opportunity to interview the child. Okay. I just, I just try to find out if you knew whether she was at school today or not. I, yeah. I haven't spoke with anybody. Um, they kind of got mad because I didn't call anybody last night. It was late. And I just feel like same thing is going to be going on today than last night. So I didn't speak with any one of my uh, family members. Everyone's calling like, you didn't call us. You didn't call, but you know, I was trying to get today today. And then I had this going on. So, um, I just don't have uh, the, the thing. It, it, the only thing that Kazayu had a problem with, can I speak one more thing before I said that? Kazayu was kind of very, very, very nervous because all her, si her cousins had went to CPS and um, they went into the system. And that makes her kind of like, you know, 
understand. She's, she's very scared to speak yeah, with everybody. I understand. I, 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 mean, I, I completely understand that. This this should not be a very intrusive thing. Um, yes. I just, you know, I just, there are just a few concerns and, and, you know, I just want them to just talk to her. It probably won't take very long. But, you know, I don't want you to do anything to interfere with that. Yes, ma'am. And, and I'm specifically making that order. That's for everybody's protection because it there there is a law that says interference with an investigation, you know, is a problem. So yes, I, it's just better for you if you don't try to make contact with her in advance of that and just let these folks do what they do. And, and then I... I think, you know, as long as the child doesn't tell us anything that there's a concern about, then that'll be the end of it. Okay. They're not going to come knocking on your door to see your house. You know, yes, at this point in time, now, you know, I can't tell you that in the future they might not, but I mean, as far as this this round goes, yes, ma'am. That's what we're going to do. Okay. okay I, sure appreciate you. I sure appreciate you today. And I'm sorry about your mother. I hope that she recovers fully and and i hope everything goes well okay thank you so much all right ma'am thank you uh-huh okay mr abby if you'll get me that order i will sign it and and uh y'all can go out and talk to her if, if if she's been withdrawn from pd i'm sure they know where she her records have been sent we'll find her all right thank you judge okay. all right thank, thank you all very much yeah have a blessed day all right y'all have a wonderful day too